Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in from the Commander's Core studio. Welcome to the show. So, spoiler season is not not back just yet. And actually, the, these spoilers are not from the upcoming set, Streets of New Capenna, which spoiler season, I believe, starts on April 7th. So that's just around the corner. But these spoilers are actually from a very, very, very early preview stream from Wizards themselves for Commander Legends 2 Battle for Baldur's Gate. So if you haven't seen my earliest episode on Elder Brain, this thing is a brutal new card. And yeah. Check out that episode to see just how brutal it can get. But don't leave just yet. Make sure you stay tuned for this episode where I talk about an exciting new Planeswalker Commander with Minsk and Boo, Timeless Heroes. So what do these heroes do? Well, let's jump into it to find out. So, Minx, Skin, Boo, Timeless Heroes start off with three starting loyalty, and they cost two red and a green. When they enter the battlefield, and at the beginning of your upkeep, you may create Boo, a legendary 1-1 red hamster creature token with Trample and Haste. The plus one is put three plus one encounters on up to one target creature with Trample or Haste, and the minus two is sacrifice a creature when you do Minx, Skin, Boo, Timeless Heroes deal X damage to any target where X is that creature's power. And if the sacrifice creature was a hamster, draw X cards. And of course, Minx Kimbu Timeless Heroes can be your commander. So it has been some time since we've actually seen a Planeswalker commander. I think the most recent one was Gris the Hunker Tide, and that was all the way back in Modern Horizons 2. But yeah, it's been a little while. And actually, unless I misheard it on the wizard stream, I believe there are going to be actually more Planeswalker commanders in this set. So if that's your thing, great. Regardless, really quick before we jump into the strategies of this card, just want to point some things out. I find the actual name of the commander somewhat strange since it includes both of their names, but the card actually makes Boo separately as, as a token creature. Uh, I don't know if others find this strange or not. I just thought it was kind of weird, but you know, it works. And also the other thing that is kind of, well, sad in a way is that, um, well, the entire goal of this commander seems to be um, making Boo quite large and then chucking Boo at an opponent and benefiting from that. So you're going to be sacrificing your hamster friend over and over and over again with this commander. And yeah, when you actually stop to think about it, that's pretty sad. Anyways, strategically, yeah, that's what you want to do. You want to get Boo out either on an ETB with this commander or again at the beginning of your upkeep, and then you make Boo larger. Then you just sacrifice Boo, chuck it at whatever you want, whether that's a creature, planeswalker, or an opponent's face. They take that damage and you draw cards based on Boo's power. Now, obviously with this fling loyalty ability, you could utilize a different creature. That being said again, you really want to utilize hamsters in particular because you're going to be drawing cards when you do so. Now, to my knowledge, Boo is actually the only hamster in Magic and the only other card that actually makes Boo is not in this color combination, so you can't utilize that one being Minx Blooded Ranger. But also, in a way, it's not the only hamster in Magic and we'll talk about that here in a bit. So with all that said, let's jump in some cards and some strategies to consider with this commander. Really quick, of course, I've just got to point out some decently expensive cards, and actually really expensive in some cases, Branching Evolution, Vorin Clex, Monstrous Raider, and Doubling Season. Yeah, from left to right, we go from like $10 to I think like $30 or so, and I think Doubling Season's all the way up to like $75 or something obnoxious. Regardless, yeah, there's a reason these are good cards. Branching Evolution says if one or more plus one counters will be put on a creature you control, twice that many plus one counters are put on that creature instead. 
So again, Boo coming into play is just a 1-1, but then you get three counters on it with your commander, and this would just double that to six counters. So now Boo, just coming out of nowhere, is a 7-7. Seven, seven. Which again, of course, you can swing with, then maybe next turn, then you obviously could just sacrifice and fling it at someone or something to deal seven damage, and then also to draw seven cards. So yeah, obviously, Vorinclex could help you out with this as well. It says if you put one or more counters on a permanent player, put twice that many of each of those kinds of counters on that permanent player instead. On top of that, it essentially halves the counters that your opponents are putting on their things too, so yeah, this is a very brutal but very effective card. And then, of course, there's Doubling Season, which will double up our counters as well, but of course, on top of that, it also doubles up our tokens. That being said, the Boo token is legendary, so with the Legend Roll, we are just going to lose one of those tokens that we are making. Unless, of course... We could utilize a card like Mirbox, which allows us to keep all the boos. It's an artifact that says the legend rule doesn't apply to permanents you control. On top of that, each legendary creature you control gets plus minus one, and each non-token creature you control gets plus minus one for each other creature you control with the same name as that creature. Again, the boo tokens are legendary, so that last part does not apply. However, all the boos are going to get bigger with each legendary creature you control gets plus minus one, and of course, that first part being the most important, we get to keep all the boos. So instead of having a maximum amount of boos in play at one, now we have no maximum, and we just essentially just keep getting token after token after token each and every turn. This not only helps us build up an army of hamsters, but also can increase their power to help them dish out more damage, whether that's in combat or when we fling them, and we draw more cards thanks to that too. And speaking of helping Boo get more power, let's talk about cards like Hero's Blade, Black Blade Reforged, and Belt of Giant Strength. Hero's Blade is a fantastic card for this deck. It's an equipment that's going to give a quick creature plus three, plus two, and on top of that, whenever a legendary creature we control enters the battlefield under our control, we can attach Hero's Blade to it. So although this does have a pretty high equip cost of four, again, we just basically get around that, especially with this commander where we just keep creating Boo after Boo after Boo, and whenever they come into play, it just auto-attaches to them, giving them plus three, plus two. So then our Boo's are essentially, what, four threes, and again, if we get those counters on them, then they're immediately going to be seven sixes? And of course, we can make Boo even larger with Black Blade Reforge, which has equipped legendary creature just for three, and it's going to equip creature we control plus plus one for each land we control. Again, we are in green, so we've got plenty of ways to land ramp, and yes, when we do so, we're going to make Boo massive with this. Speaking of which, we can take advantage of Boo gaining power in these ways, and of course with those counters, with something like Belt of Giant Strength. It says, Equip Creature has base power and toughness 10-10, and it's got equipped for 10, but this ability is going to cost X less to activate, or X is the power of a creature it targets. So the bigger Boo gets, the more easy it is to attach this, and when it is attached, instead of Boo just having a base power and toughness of 1-1, one, one, it's going to be a 10-10. Which then, of course, is going to have even more power based on all the things that are stacked on top of it, whether those are counters or more equipment, etc, etc, etc. But yeah, increasing Boo's power is crucial for this commander, because again, we can just fling Boo at someone or something, and also draw a ton of cards with these. I mean, just think about having one or two of these equipped and how many cards you can draw with Boo in just one turn. But of course, we've got other cards that can help us with that power with cards like Unleash Fury, Exponential Growth, and Unnatural Growth. Unleash Fury is a very simple card. It's an instant for one in red that says double the power of target creature until end of turn. So for just two mana, we double up one of our creature's power, and again, that's going to be Boo, we're going to double it, and we're going to essentially dish out double the damage when we sacrifice it, and then also draw twice as many cards. Again, just for two mana. But in an even bigger way, we've got Exponential Growth, which says, until end of turn, double target creature's power X times. I mean, even let's just say Boo already has those three counters on it from the turn prior. We pay, what, just even six mana into this, okay? X equals two, essentially. We double Boo's power twice. That's four times two is eight times two is 16, 16. We swing, we sacrifice, we ping something for a ton, and we also draw 16 cards. So that's pretty incredible, and speaking of incredible, Unnatural Growth is an enchantment that says at the beginning of each combat, double the power and toughness of each creature you control until end of turn. So this is an automatic power doubler, which obviously is absolutely incredible with Boo. Yeah, Powers Matters cards are definitely cards to keep in mind when it comes to this commander. Other ones that I do want to bring up if you happen to have the budget for them are cards like the Ozolith and Fiery Emancipation. The Ozolith is a legendary artifact that says whenever a creature you control leaves the battlefield of add counters on it, put those counters on the Ozolith. 
And at the beginning of combat on your turn, if the Ozolith has counters on it, you may move all counters from the Ozolith on the target creature. So basically, get counters on Boo. Sacrifice Boo. Hit something for a ton, draw cards. Then you get those counters on the Ozolith. Get a new Boo in play. Go to combat. Get those counters onto new Boo. And then you see where this is going. We just keep building more and more counters onto our boos to actually dish out more and more damage, draw more and more cards, and get an absurd amount of counters on the Ozolith to just keep doing this over and over again, just building up that total mass of counters. And of course, we can take advantage of those counters and that power and the flinging of that power with something like Fiery Emancipation. It says if a source you control would deal damage to a permanent or player deals triple that damage to that permanent or player instead. Yeah, there's a reason this card is really good in Commander. I mean, first up, I mean, even just swinging with Boo in combat, you're going to dish out three times the damage. And when you fling it, you're going to dish out three times as well. And again, with the amount of things that we have in this deck to increase power, we can dish out an absurd amount of damage in one fling to basically take out a player. But again, like I mentioned, these are decently expensive cards. So here's hoping for some reprints on these. And next up, really quick, because this is a Planeswalker Commander, of course I have to bring up the Chain Veil. It is a legendary artifact that says at the beginning of your end step, if you didn't activate a loyalty ability of a Planeswalker this turn, you lose two life. So there's an easy solution to that. Do that. Anyways, by paying four and tapping for each Planeswalker you control, you may activate one of its loyalty abilities once this turn as though none of its loyalty abilities have been activated this turn. So with this, essentially, you could either, you know, double up the number of counters that you're going to be putting on Boo, or get counters on it and fling it, or maybe fling two things. Getting more activations with your Planeswalker Commander is pretty much never going to be a bad thing. But yeah, again, like the previous two cards, this card does need a reprint, so here's hoping. Moving on, and I kind of alluded to this earlier, but... Yes, Boo is actually the only hamster in all of Magic, but as many people in the comments like to say when it comes to creature types, technically, changelings are every creature type, so changelings are hamsters as well. So obviously you can utilize cards like Taurine Mahler, Chameleon Colossus, and even Maskwood Nexus. Taurian Mahler is an especially spicy one with this commander. It's a 2-2 with Changeling, so again, it's every creature type, including hamster, and whenever an opponent casts a spell, you may put a plus one counter on Taurian Mahler. So this, hamster, vampire, knight, uh, sphinx, everything essentially again, but hamster's the one that matters, is going to grow throughout the game. And again, in a format like Commander, where we've got three opponents, there's going to be a lot of spells cast by them. And this thing can get huge, and we can fling it for a ton of damage and draw a ton of cards with it. But of course, another fantastic changeling with this commander is Chameleon Colossus, a 4-4 with protection from black, and it has pay two green green. Chameleon Colossus gets plus X plus X until end of turn, it X's its power. So for four mana, we can double up on this card's power, which again is going to double up the amount of damage that we're dishing out with our commander with that fling ability and double up the amount of cards that we draw because again, this is technically a hamster. So by, you know, either getting more counters on this or by equipping it with some things, you can make it even more powerful and really take advantage of being able to double its power up for mana. And you could also just take advantage of pretty much any creature that you want to if you want to have a Maskwood Nexus kind of build. It says creatures you control are every creature type. The same is true for creature spells you control and creature cards you own that aren't on the battlefield. So essentially, yeah, if you've got any other kinds of creatures in your deck, now those are also hamsters and also great options to fling. And of course, on top of that, you can actually pay three and tap this to make a 2-2 hamster. Or, okay, a 2-2 blue shapeshifter creature token with changeling, which yes, is also a hamster. But of course, while you are doing all this, you definitely need to think of some ways to protect your commander because again, you've got a Planeswalker commander, which of course can be attacked to be removed. So wipe the board with something like Blasphemous Act. Again, it deals 13 damage to each creature and it basically only costs a red to do so the vast majority of the time. Again, we really don't care if the board is wiped if we're just focused on having Boo come back into play next turn anyways. Or maybe you can utilize your opponent's creatures against themselves with things like Disrupt Decorum. It says, go to all creatures you don't control, so until your next turn, all their creatures have to attack another player, not you, and yeah, have fun watching all that go down. And of course, another direction that you could take this commander, again, with all the card draw that you can potentially have with it, is Turbo Fog, because who doesn't love Turbo Fog? So maybe you cast a card like Constant Miss, which makes it so that creatures deal no combat damage this turn, and of course, when you cast that, you can also sacrifice a land to bring this right back to your hand so you can cast it again. Again, you are in green, so you've got plenty of ways to get more lands into play, and protecting your commander is going to be crucial for this kind of a deck. Now, when it comes to a commander that might want Minx skin Boo, Timeless Heroes, the first one that came to my mind, or at least I should say the type of commander that came to my mind, is going to be that Super Friends kind of commander, much like, you know, Essica, or should I say, the Prismatic Bridge. 
The Prismatic Bridge says that at the beginning of your upkeep, reveal cards to the top of your library until you reveal a creature or planeswalker card. Put that card on the battlefield and the rest of the bottom of your library in a random order. Basically, hey, just keep getting free planeswalkers off the top of your library in this kind of a Super Friends build. So, of course, yet another planeswalker out there with this new planeswalker might fit well into a planeswalker deck. Who figured? And of course, there are plenty of other commanders out there at the helm of Super Friends decks, like you know Sisse, but Esco was just the first one that popped in my mind, or again, I should say the Prismatic Bridge, because that's really the side that most people cast, unless you know you're Eddie. Blame Eddie! Regardless, now that I'm wrapping things up, it's time for me to give you my final thoughts on Minsk and Boo Timeless Heroes. This commander definitely has a lot of potential for an interesting build. Essentially, you just want to get your Boo token out, you want to make it larger, you want to fling it, and you want to draw a ton of cards when you do so. That being said, again, the card is just kind of weird to me with some things, again, that this card's name is actually Minx and Boo, so both the names, but you also, you know, make a token of Boo, which is kind of strange. And it's also just kind of sad that you're, again, just chucking a hamster over and over again at your opponents or their creatures and you gain cards for doing so it's just kind of kind of sad poor boo <clears throat> anyways let's not end on a down note about chucking hamsters um more spoilers to come yay and with that the show has come to a close so it's my turn here from you so in the comments below let me know your thoughts on this episode are and as always thanks again and have a good one